Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Garayas, uh, Bio 111, Anatomy and Physiology 1. And this is Unit 1, Anatomage, Week 1. And I'm making a video because uh, there are some groups we went kind of fast, and there are other groups uh, had a little bit more or less. So I'm going to make it universal, so something that you can watch and learn. So how do we turn this thing on? If we're looking at the anatomage, see that rocker switch right there? I could ask on the checkoff, how do you turn this thing on? And that's the rocker switch. I click on that and I wait about 90 seconds or so. This screen, right, uh, comes up and the icon we're looking for is table EDU 9.0.1. And I double click on it. And then this should come up. And then I have these menus. The menus that we'll be focusing on in unit one are cadavers. And that's if we need uh, the four um, uh, bodies, two male, two female, functional anatomy. That's anything that has some sort of um, animation that highlights physiology. Histology, I want you to think about uh, uh, you know, something that's microscopic and like uh, slides uh, and, but histology actually means logy study of histo tissues. Cytology is the study of cells. Both are part and parcel of pathology, which is the study of disease. And last but not least, prosection. The cadavers are actual former human beings that have been uh, scanned three millimeters at a time and dissected but then they got scanned and they were turned into some sort of, uh, you know, uh, com computer generated thing. So it'll be nice and clean. But the pro section is actually a 3D photograph of, uh, uh, of like, you know, anatomages like best hits, like, you know, the best picture of the heart and the best picture of the lungs and the best picture of the brain, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna double click on cadavers. And then when I do, this thing comes up and that's our uh, female uh, patient our female cadaver Asian All right and if we look at our anatomy instructions that the first thing we want to talk about is orientation and then visibility so let's look at all the orientations of course my patient is currently in supine position or lying down and then I click on this button right here and then I could do the different positions I click on this button twice, and then I have my patient now in posterior view. Earlier, it was anterior view. Now it's posterior view or prone position. The other one is anterior view or ventral view, and she is lying supine. The other here, right lateral. Her right hand is showing, and she's pictured lateral. Then I want to change her again. Left lateral. Okay, do you notice that uh, uh, her left side is now facing us and she's facing us laterally. She's facing us from the head, which is cephalic. You hit the, that button again, and now we're facing from her feet up, which is caudal. That is the orientation button. And we bring it back to our uh, supine slash anterior view. Another thing you could do, you could do it manually. You can turn your patient on axis with a single finger, such as this. Let me pan back a little bit. So, there you go. I can move her on her axis like this. I can move her physically the whole entire way, up or down, with two fingers. I could pinch to make her bigger. I could also pinch to make her smaller. And then we can go back to the orientation button and bring her all back to where she was earlier. The next is the visibility tool, and that's located down here. And when I click on that, it shows all the systems, and notice here, it also has skeletal as well. So this button down here removes everybody, and remember in class, we want to isolate muscular. So I click on muscular, then, of course, I close out, and then now we can see muscular. 
So I could ask you to do that for skeletal, uh, ask you to locate, or I could ask you, can you bring it back to normal with all systems in play? You'll go back to the visibility tool, which is the eyeball, and then click this button down here, and it'll bring everything back. So let's bring it back to muscular, because we painted some muscles, or muscles. So everyone love this pectoralis, love it. So I click on that and I can go down here to the color wheel and then I click on the upper, see that where that, where that triangle is? I click on that upper part and then it brings out the color wheel and then I just pick a color at random, right? Prince purple and we could do that with other things. So that's how you color things. And if you want to remove the color, you just highlight on what you wanted, the pectoralis major, and then just click on it again, and then you'll see it disappears. Other popular stuff that people chose were biceps. Just a little quick to show you some stuff. Remember your serratus was here, your flatissima, orbicularis oris, if I have my orbicularis oris, I also have my orbicularis oculi for my eyes. My frontal bone has a occipital frontalis, or my frontalis muscle. External obliques. Vastus lateralis. Sartorius. Just to name a few. And this is the muscular section. So let's now go back here on our instructions, and let's see what else they want to tell us. So we colored stuff, go to your canvas shell and look at the documents regarding cadavers. There's a document, uh, cadaver information. So uh, what you need to answer in the Microsoft Word is 14, 15, and 16, and it's based on cadaver information. All right, remember to um, choose, um, what do you call that? Uh, make sure that you have a Microsoft Word document and with your name, uh, the name of the assignment, which is Unit 1 Anatomage, and um, uh, the date, which is today, Friday the 27th, okay? And then another thing that we also showed you was the pro section. So if we went in here and we looked at, well, let's look at the histology first. So if I look at histology, And this would, would come up. If I clicked on histology, this thing would come up and then you'd, you'd, you'd pick, you know, what do you want? Um, cartilage, dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue, bone. I picked blood and I picked human. So here's what it looked like. And you could see the majority of it is red blood cells. And then you could see that one white blood cell there it looks like a polymorphonucleocyte known as a neutrophil. And then you could see these little specks. See that speck right there? It's like, they look like dirt. Here you go. This is what I'm gonna do for you. Let me draw a... See the speck right here? Right, that little dot, tiny dot. Well, that's a platelet. The majority of stuff that you can see, they have, it's like a bunch of donuts or a bunch of lifesavers. That's your red blood cell. And this thing right here, that's a white blood cell. And this all can be found, because it's microscopic, this can be also found in your histology section. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And let's go to the pro section. And here's the pro section. When I choose pro section, it has actual a 3D photograph. And how do I know? Remember, we can move things around with one finger, right? I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger. Now, the neat thing about this thing is, like this is the brain, you click on certain parts and then it'll label it for you and it'll color for you. So this is the back part of the brain and it's called the occipital lobe. Top part of the brain, the pair of parietal lobes. The front part of the brain, as you can see here, colored in red, frontal bone. You have your cingulate gyrus here in 80s lime green. Your corpus callosum here, and that's in light gray. That's the connection between your left and right hemispheres. And the cingulate gyrus is uh, 
part of your limbic system which deals with your uh, emotions. So you can see here in practice, and then you can go to this button down here, and then get rid of all the labels, get rid of all the colors, and then start again. Hey, where's the frontal lobe? Oh, I think it's here. Oh, no, sorry. That's the occipital lobe. And also, I have quizzes installed here as well that could also help you out. So, all together, what do you need to know? The cadavers, the animations, which are the functional anatomy, and the histology, and the prosection. Oh, I think I forgot to show you functional anatomy. Now, when we go into functional anatomy, there's a whole bunch of things. Kinesiology is movements, and of course, uh, simulated pregnancy, your eye. But let's choose cardiology. I think I have it here somewhere. Here you go. Now, let's press play. We're going to be talking about this in the near future, and you could see that's your atrium, right atrium to be specific right ventricle, you see they're contracting at different times and it corresponds to the different waveforms that we see here in our EKG. And we can make the EKG heart rate go faster. It's fast. And we could also even slow it down and give them bradycardia, less than 60 beats per minute. Look how slow it's going now. And now we can also get the heart. Since this is the scan, we could dissect and the dissection tool. We're going to talk more about that later, but I was showing this to the other class and they thought it was cool. So I'm going to sit and I'm going to find a place to cut all along here. I make this disappear. Then I roll this over. And I got this inside of my heart. If you want to pan back and look at it all together. You can see the atria up here with the sinoatrial node and the uh, atrioventricular node right here, SA node, AV node. And since it's the right side, this is your uh, tricuspid, right, um, right atrium, right ventricle. You can see how thick the walls are. You also have all of your great vessels here. So that's part of functional anatomy. So let's go over what are our things that we've known. We have cadavers that has our four bodies, two male, two female, the functional anatomy, which is this, the, uh, the scanned uh, animations, histology, that was the um, blood peripheral smear that we did, and that brain, which is an actual 3D photograph, that was the prosection. And those are the four sections that you should be able to have seen today. And if you didn't, you know, you got this video and then you can also stop by, all right? So you can answer these questions, right, regarding physiology, um, show which physiology, and you could show the one that we showed the heart, but uh, you can also, um, you know, which option you select, you could heart, and there was, what was the other ones? And just say, or, or which one you are interested in. And then the pro section, uh, uh, which, which image did we use? We use the library, which particular image, the brain. And the interesting thing is, of course, whatever you would find interesting regarding the brain. Say if you were looking at the brain, what did you find interesting about this? To me, isn't it crazy how everything has its place? It's like in sections. It's kind of weird how it's like we were constructed somehow, like a machine. Okay. That's one thing interesting, that each part of your brain has a section. So, for example, the frontal part that has uh, decision-making and memory, or well, some memory. The cingulate gyrus here deals with your limbic system or emotion. Your corpus callosum, which is this thing right here in gray, that connects to the left and right side. So when you think about it, you know when they say, oh, people are... Uh, you know, um, I forgot which one's artistic, left side or right side, and which one's mathematical. When you deal with higher math, uh, that deals with what? Um, a little bit of art. And then uh, same thing, when you deal with some art, there's a lot, especially in your perspective class, there's a lot of mathematical calculation in that. The parietal lobe, 
right? Uh, that deals with both motor and sensory integration. Your occipital lobe deals in general with uh, your um, uh, vision. And you can see, you see all the really important stuff like vision, right? And then you have the pons here, right? Which, uh, ooh, what is the pons and the midbrain deal with? Uh, they deal with a lot of um, uh, the integrations of homeostasis and they connect down to your spinal cord. So that also has to do with like uh, all the cardiovascular stuff, right? And uh, connections to your medulla oblongata and all these things. And we're gonna talk more about that when, uh, well, you and your professor will talk more about that, but you can now see how a prosection, how it's kind of like, you know, real looking. And again, in order for me to erase everything, I go to this, uh, take out all the color, that's that, take out all the A or labels, the text, and then it goes back to what? Then you retest yourself. Now, you know what's really neat? This is what I did. Let's bring it back to her. I put quizzes, practice quizzes. Let's pick one. Then I picked one out of this and anterior muscles. It was under the Gorias folder. And then I press play. And what does it ask me? Where is my right serratus anterior? Hmm, hmm, where should it be? Remember the riblets? There you go. And confirm, am I right? You're correct. Yay. Then next. And then you can take your own mini quiz, right? And you can make an appointment for that. My right brachioradialis. It's here somewhere. Brachium, your um, your upper arm, your radial bone is the arm that's uh, the bone next to your thumb. You're gonna learn that quite shortly. And then what do you do? Confirm. Correct. Next. And then you keep on going. Let's say I got a whole bunch of them wrong. Do I wanna quit? Yes, I wanna quit. Oh, I only got uh, two out of the whole. So, well, well, two out of the two got correct. But um, this thing also can show me which ones you got right, which ones you got wrong, and how fast did you how fast did you answer it? You know, 10 seconds in, 23 seconds in. So this can also show you, you know, and again, do you need to be fast? No. Do you need to be slow? No. You need to be smooth. Smooth is fast. Okay? All right, this is Dr. Garias. I think let's review one more time if there's uh, anything else we need here. Uh, functional anatomy, you could answer that. Uh, High-res regional anatomy tab, you could talk about, um, um, uh, you know, the cadavers. So which image did you choose? We chose muscular, which system is muscular, and then, um, you know. Um, and again, if it's, uh, so if I'm like this, I have this. Now, you know what's neat if you're, if your Microsoft Word goes too long, you click on the top part right here, you double click on it, and then you could put your name, and then the title of uh, the assignment's already here, and then you could put due date, or well, well not like that. But you know what I'm saying. Blah, 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 what are these? Blah, 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 right? You can put it all up here, and then you close the header, and then this, you'll see your name, and the date on every page. And again, if I'm, if I'm the one submitting this, I have my name, date of submission, I'm gonna delete all the stuff that's not important to my professor, like all this stuff. And then, right, go to the cad uh, cadaver information and then answer my questions underneath here, right? And then just tab in and that'll be my answer. Now, where do you get this cadaver information? Let's close this out. So I'm home and let's make this a student view. So it looks like your student. So if you're looking at this, right, you can see navigation stuff here on the left. So you can go into your modules right here. So I hit up my modules. You could have a practice lab quiz, that's nice. Um, study, medical terminology, holes, in Anatomy Physiology Guide, Microsoft, and MIH Training. Here, cadaver information. And we had the female, so we can look her up. And the Asian female, we can look her up. 
and we could see. Right? Uh, oh, she's 26. I thought she was like 31. 26. Uh, she had pneumonia secondary to gastric CA or gastric carcinoma. And then also, she's also had reconstruction of the face, so you could see some of the bones. Uh, uh, port calf, which is a catheter. You could see where, where it was uh, wired through. And, you know, you could write a little quick thing, you know, in just your own words, what do you see? And you look here, she has a gastric fistula. And you look up what that is, and then write your own little definition. Now, if you got, if you did it, if you want to quote it per se, of course, look up APA Seventh Edition uh, citation, or give me uh, a ring, and I could give you some links to that. And of course, as a final commercial, please, uh, you guys got my email. Where is it? If you go here, and you go on your homepage, right? You go hit up announcements. And uh, I'm here. And if anyone tell Ms. Evans, I think I have an extra laptop charger somewhere laying around from another term. But I'm here. Right? Okay. Now, uh, I extended uh, the due date because since it was the first day and there was a lot of uh, rushing and and so also to give you an opportunity to watch this video, which I'm gonna put right here in the uh, announcements. I'll put it right underneath this thing so it's all in one place. All right, have a good one, everybody. Have a good weekend. See you around.